Welcome to AEW Unrestricted. We are the official podcast of All Elite Wrestling. This is, how long have we been doing this, Aubrey? Oh my God, like almost, I'd say we're coming up on like three years maybe? On three years, how about that? Maybe Tony, two? I don't know. I don't it feels know. like yesterday. Yeah, wait till you get my age. It'll feel like. Oh, Jesus. Mm, that's a long way away in your life. Anyway, I'm Tony <laughs> Schiavone, along with referee Aubrey Edwards. Hey, Aubrey. Hi, Tony. I love you. I'm so love happy you, you're here. I love you too. And we also love our guest, Tony Storm, who's joined us. Hi, Tony. Hi, Tony. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. So How many are you? Tonys. It is yes. so great. It's yeah, there really is. They're so great to have you in AEW. You've been such a delight to work with, and also you've given us such great matches. Uh, it's great to have you here. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm really happy to be here. I am having the time of my life so far. So yeah, <laughs> it's been great. I we think one with- of the favorite things is uh, like now we've got three Tonys backstage and I don't think we've ever run into any issue figuring out which Tony anyone is referring to because there's like TK, Shivani and Tony and it's just everyone knows and everyone follows along. It's great. Yeah. Oh, that's awkward because I've been getting confused and I'm one of the Tonys. So that's <laughs> good. <laughs> this is going so well. <laughs> yeah. That's actually why I use my last name. Hey, it's Shivani. You know, no, no you know, so there you go. <laughs> Anyway, uh, uh, Tony, let, let's start by this. You had your first wrestling match at age 13. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes, I yeah. did. Uh, I guess it was that. a wrestling match. Well. Um, <laughs> I Yeah, I started uh, quite young um, for a really small company in Australia that allowed 12-year-olds to wrestle. I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I got to, I got to wrestle and um, – yeah, I somehow made it through, and I'm still standing. I'm still here now. Somehow. Oh my, oh my. So, so you're you start wrestling when you're 13, and mm-hmm. do you clearly if you're wrestling when you're 13, you've been a wrestling fan in childhood. When was the first time that you were introduced to wrestling? Um, I was about 10 when I discovered it on TV, and then um, yeah, it was it was kind of cool though to be a young wrestling fan, but also getting to like, I guess, do, you know, get, I got to go away each weekend and do wrestling moves. I was by no means good at all. Right. Terrible. But, <laughs> um, but, but um, it was fun. It was like a good uh, thing that I got to do in my teens. It kept me off the street. Kept me, okay. um, you know, kept me, uh, kept me on the straight and narrow. If I, yeah. It was a good thing. <laughs> and so f- five years later, you moved to the UK, right? And you, yes. uh, you go to Liverpool. Yes, right. I uh, I lived in Liverpool for a, um, I spent a lot of time there when I was about 17, 18 onwards up until moving over to the States two years ago. And right. uh, that was, again, a really good experience. I loved living there. A uh, really good city, Liverpool. I got to spend a lot of time um, all like all across different cities all over the UK and all over Europe because it's so close to everything. So that was a really good time for me being able to live out there and experience it is there a particular reason why you picked liverpool over anywhere else well i have some family there so i was like shit if anything goes wrong i should i should probably go (laughs) (laughs) i should probably be be, you know somewhere close to family i was out there visiting family and um i was really close to the all-star wrestling school where dean Ormark was head coach and um i went and trained there and then i started getting um I started working for Brian Dixon and doing like the holiday camps out there, like Butlins camps. And uh, it's, it's been a really good experience. um, I, I I learned a lot out there, made a lot of friends, had a really good time. We're talking with Tony storm, but this is AEW unrestricted. Thanks for being with us. And and Tony, we've talked about 13 year old Tony beginning 18 year old Tony moving to Liverpool, had family members there. Talk about the role your grandparents have played in your life. Um, uh, Yeah, quite a, a big role actually my mom and my grandparents had um pretty much raised me so i had like a i have like a close bond with them so it was um yeah so i was you know they were able to help me out when i would um when i was when i by the time i'd moved to the uk and um it's good to have as much family around as as possible because uh i i because i'm really close to my mom and my little sister but they're in australia so at least when I moved to the UK, like I had some people, which was nice. <laughs> uh, you've said 
previous interviews that Jeff Hardy was a huge influence on your wrestling career. Uh, what's it like to now work with him and whatnot? <laughs> it's pretty cool. Yeah, I I uh, was just uh, me. I had my match with Jamie Hayter right before him and Darby Allen uh, last night. So it was pretty cool. Right. Uh, yeah, really oh. cool. Makes me feel like I'm I'm doing the right thing. If I'm if uh, you know I'm rubbing shoulders with people that I grew up watching, it's pretty cool that I get to share the same locker room. And um, yeah, it must mean I'm doing something right. What about him as a performer uh, stuck out to you? Oh, just, oh, you know how it is when you're a kid and you see Jeff Hardy. It's it's that kind Jumping of, off um, the ladder. yeah, that excitement, like no other. Um, got to see him, uh, you know, sat back, like back row at a, a 2007 live event in Brisbane. Got to see Jeff Hardy, you know, just total fanatic as a child. Um, just that uh, energy, the charisma, just love. Everyone loves Jeff Hardy. <laughs> um, everyone does yeah. you're right yeah yeah yep. yeah yep. awesome uh, it's just incredible talk about the first time you met him how how did that go oh um yeah just <laughs> nothing much to report they just said hello <laughs> don't want to like act like yep. a crazy yeah. fan or nothing <laughs> right <laughs> but it, uh, it is cool it is cool i have mad respect for jeff hardy i just think he's uh incredible and he's been going so long and he's still taking crazy bumps he's just <laughs> crazy man. I know. Yeah. Crazy man. It's awesome. <laughs> I saw him limping. I saw him limping backstage after his match with Darby. He was kind of just kind I of think limping everybody around. Everybody saw him limping. Yeah, yeah limping <laughs> around. And I said, I said, man, are you okay? He said, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. I said, yeah, you are now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, <laughs> fine. Wait, as he limps wait. over to medical to get ice. <laughs> right. Just amazing I the like things he does. That's the Jeff Hardy walk now. The Jeff Hardy walk is a limp. Yeah, it really is. It's a, I feel like it's more it's, like the the veteran limp, like you've earned it. Yeah, you see some yeah. guy like kind of walking down. It's like, oh yeah, no, that's that's so and so. Okay, I know the walk. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> you've you've had some really incredible matches so far on on AEW television, both on Dynamite and on Rampage. And I I know we're going to see many many more. But one of them that I want to talk about is uh, you and Ruby Soho teamed up against Britt Baker and Jamie Hayter in the opening of a Rampage episode recently. And it was very good. Like, I went back, I watched the match again. It was just super awesome. Uh, I love the chemistry that you and Ruby have. Uh, that, Like, what makes that chemistry work so well? Oh, yeah, I, uh, I definitely feel that chemistry. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's just because we're very similar people, um, gone through very similar experiences, very similar careers. Um, I feel like we have a lot in common. So I kind of knew going into it that we would just have this excellent chemistry and we did. And I really felt it. Um, I'm feeling that chemistry a lot already, like with, uh, not just Ruby, but being in there with Britt Baker and uh, Jamie Hayter. Like mm -hmm. those women are making a lot of noise right now. And uh, it's exciting to be in the ring with them. Yeah. As we're, rec as we're recording this, uh, uh, Tony Storm and Jamie, Jamie Hayter had their match in the first round of the Owen Hart tournament. Uh, very special being in that tournament, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. It's um, incredible to be a part of. And to be first round, me and Jamie Hayter, I was definitely feeling the pressure yeah. of, um, yeah, like setting the standard. Like, we've really got to have a good match here because this is, um, this sets the tone for the tournament going forward. But um, I had, um, I had a great time winning. <laughs> um, yeah. I had a really good time uh, last night. That really, I feel like every match that I'm having here so far is just kind of um, reigniting that passion more and more, more than I thought possible. So, right. yeah, last night was a huge part of that. It was a great match. It really was. Tony, Thank you. you should be proud of it. Was, it was a very exciting mm. match. I was glad to be able to be there for it. And I was. Thank you. You know, you know I, I love to give Jamie Hayter a hard time. You know that first hand. First <laughs> I've seen. Yeah. You've seen, it's right. It's good. So I'm I a saw big her, fan of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I saw her at the airport day. I said, hey, great match, Jamie. Great match. She said, thank you. I said, were you in it? I couldn't recall. I know Tony was <gasps> oh! in it. Oh. Oh, <laughs> so I love I just, it. I love to hear it. And of course, it. <laughs> she gives gives me a big shove. So anyway, it's but anyway, the best it was, part is is this is probably happening at five a.m. in the morning, so everyone's just tired and yeah. grouchy. Like that's how I drew it up in my head. Oh, right. so great. 
You gotta yeah. be careful so too. Good. She's probably like the strongest woman I've like ever been in the ring with. Seriously, isn't she? Yeah, she just. <laughs> oh my god, I'm not gonna yeah. lie. I don't want to give her too much credit or anything, but right. I felt like an infant being thrown around there. It was pretty cool. <laughs> no, 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 it was it was funny. So we get back, we get to the back after the match, right? And like we're we're talking about stuff, checking in, making sure everyone's okay. And Tony just goes, "So strong, just so strong." Just looks at Jamie. So strong. Just, just, strong. just real strong. Just strong. Just, like, just keep saying. You can just kill me. You can just kill me. Like I'm powerless to it. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm going to be really careful. <laughs> oh, no, boy. she's good. She's trained, but I lived with her actually for a few months. Oh, and wow. like that girl trains, like she would go to this garage gym for two hours straight. And like, yeah, you can hear her like screaming. You know, right. Jesus. Like she's, Legit. So like I knew going into this match, what I was up against. Like yeah, right. it's gonna. We're gonna. Yeah, she's gonna kill me. It's gonna yeah. be really. Yeah, it's gonna be good. I think when. Uh, <laughs> I think when I found out I was refing this, I came up to you too. I was just like, "Hey, so you guys are gonna beat the shit out of each other, right?" And you're like, "Yeah." <laughs> it's like, yeah, oh, dev. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, we're all gonna regret definitely. This later. Okay, definitely gonna be that. Woo. I got yeah. some more. I got some more ammo now. When I see her next time, I say I talked to Tony, and you just <laughs> don't you know? I, you were just so stiff in that match. I mean, just can't you just lighten up or just so geez. unprofessional? So unprofessional. No, I can't say that because someone now will quote me and you'll have some wrestling <laughs> side be like, Tony yeah. Storm reveals Jamie Hayter's unprofessional. <laughs> That's always what happens with everything. You're, you're right. Oh, wait, you're right. You're 100%. Oh, oh my God. Shut up and don't say a damn thing about yeah, what I say. It's right, still, guys? We're, having, we're having a good time <laughs> ripping on each other. We're all friends. We love each oh, other. Man. You get it. Take your wrestling website and you know what to do with it. Shove yeah. it up your ass. Shove it up your ass. There you go. Shove it up your ass. There we go. Okay. <laughs> shove it up your ass. That's that's the clickbait title. Tony Storm says, shove it up your ass. <laughs> that's, that's all I've got for all of you. That's all I have to say. Shove it up your ass. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Uh, less, less shoving up your ass and more more back to anything else. Um, <laughs> so I know I know Tony Conn reached out to you. And I think you you said that you're you're thankful that you're getting a second chance in your career. Did you yeah. think that you were done with wrestling when you left WWE? There was moments, like, at first, definitely. I was like, oh, well, this is shockingly terrible. I've got to leave forever. This is <laughs> this is me done. And then, um, I mean, it didn't last long, you know, because I quit, left, sat on it for a while, and... You know, you get that wrestling itch. I really thought it was dead. I really thought I was done. <laughs> I'm not done. Uh, I'm never done. I'm one of those, I'm a lifer. I'll probably be around uh, until I'm old as hell and I'll probably have kids that wrestle and, you know. <laughs> <laughs> got it all planned out. <laughs> I'm, I'm here for life. There's no, yeah. I'm not, I'm, I'm probably, yeah. What, what else am I going to do? What, I don't have any, I don't have any other qualifications. I don't like anything else. Right. Um, I never showed an interest in anything whatsoever. I didn't really go to school, so yeah. Well, you know, once yeah. you're bitten, by, once you're, <laughs> hey Tony and and Aubrey, you'll agree with this. Once you're bitten by this bug, right? It's yeah, a hell of a bug. It, yeah. yeah, it's a hell of a bug. It's hard to get it out of your system, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, we get it. We get it. And before every match, before every match, I'm like, oh, why do I do this? This is the worst. And then after, I'm like, <laughs> uh, oh yeah. Yeah. Or like Accurate. right through, go through the cut, and you're like, oh yeah, no. this, this is why. Cool. I, I, I love this. Is, right. yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> you know, we're we are <laughs> talking with Tony Storm. You're listening to AEW Unrestricted. We have more. We'll talk about her run in Japan and much more on Unrestricted. This is AEW Unrestricted, the official podcast of All Elite Wrestling. Your hosts, Aubrey Edwards and Tony Schiavone, here with the wonderful and amazing Tony Storm. Uh, we were talking a little bit earlier about how uh, we're all very tired and we see each other at the airport at 5 a.m. I'm rocking an energy drink today, like my good personal friend, Tony Schiavone, because I just got off a plane. Uh, Tony, I hear you had an interesting travel story today. What happened? Oh, you're not going to believe it. It was, um, it was quite an interesting morning to say the least i get my I, i'm on like 8 a.m from jfk going home you know how it is early flight not much sleep mm -hmm. kind of getting through you're kind of waking up on the plane as it's taking off and so i'm sat on plane and we're about to take off but there's a bit of a delay but the captain's like it's fine we've just got one more like 
10 minutes to go. We'll be up in the air shortly. And there's this commotion kind of like somewhat beside me. And <laughs> Yeah. I just have to get this off my chest because it's it was the most wildest, ridiculous thing I've seen for a while. I've seen for a minute and I just have to tell people. And oh this God. guy, this guy just, I guess he didn't want to wait to go to the bathroom. I guess he really <gasps> needed to go to the bathroom. So he he had this empty cup and I shit you not, he just was like, man, no, I can't. I'm, I'm going to piss myself. I can't piss myself. <laughs> and like, he whips it out, up, like straight up with it out, feed in a cup. I'm not lying. This happened beside me. This he, a full flat. It's like a stack. It's full. And there's this, cup. I can hear the cup filling. I can hear the cup filling. Oh. But I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> like I, what do you do in that moment? Yeah. I'm like mortified. It was, I'm just- I, I was like, does this <laughs> happen? Does this yeah. happen regularly on early morning flights from JFK? Mm, don't think so. Because it was it was just insane. And this woman beside him was like, oh, it was a whole commotion. And then immediately after, this is where it gets weird. Immediately <laughs> it's after. A, wait, it's not weird yet? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hold up. <laughs> Hold up. <laughs> uh. So a few rows back, further back, like you hear this announcement, the flight attendant's like, oh, uh, the, there's a very special person who wants to ask a very special someone a special something. No. And then I turn around and some guy is proposing to his wife, but like, I'm looking at this guy who's still holding his cup of pits, who like, I have to look at him to look at this guy who's in- proposing to the woman of his dreams <laughs> on this disgusting flight and it was just it was too much all at once uh, yeah it was but like the worst part about the whole thing was when we were taking off like he's juggling this cup i was mortified i've i, I come it's one of those things where it's going to take a while to get that out of my head it was right oh beside boy. me so he's yeah. juggling this cup full of <laughs> urine yeah and you're taking off and you're thinking this <laughs> thing is going to slosh around any moment now or he's going to drop it worst of all yeah, uh, you, and and now you're thinking in your mind if 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 I'm right here, you know I can ding and get the flight attendant, but then again it'll delay the flight another hour before they get yeah. his dumb ass off and throw him off or something. Oh because yeah, some- and then <laughs> we landed and there was police standing right there. It was off. Were they? Oh yeah, they, they took him off the plane. Him. Good. I'm, you know, you know what I'm thinking. Like you know, I flight attendants yell at me if my bag is slightly sticking out of the little seat thing and i'm being told off and then a guy cannot sit next to me and just straight up take a piss in the seat beside me so he better be arrested i'll be following up on this wow. case so the flight attendants Sorry. ever say anything? no that's this is a tremendous story this <laughs> this is worth a whole segment in itself yes. so this so listen all this thing about stardom can wait so uh <laughs> Screw it. <laughs> That's right. I got more. I got more so, important shit. <laughs> so the so the flight attendants say something to him at all. Well, they- the woman the woman beside him like gets the flight attendant and they're like, "Is there a problem?" And she's like, "Yes." And like this commotion, but I think they try and keep it calm because like right. I guess no one wants a cup of piss slung at them. And like I didn't exactly. want to. Exactly. Yeah, you never, you can never cause too much commotion yeah. when someone's holding a cup of pee. Just, set, yeah. just so you know, guys, that's my wisdom for the day. That's my advice. That's how I, how I like to live my life. Just don't especially, try and reason with people. Uh, with- <laughs> especially if they're holding a cup of pee in one hand and they're cock in the other. You just never know. <laughs> no, that's you what just. I, <laughs> be, you be careful around that kind of behavior. Up in oh, the air, man. too. Hey, yeah. well, Tony, congratulations. This story is going to live in infamy in my mind. I yes. can say that right now. You're all welcome. <laughs> okay. um, so when this episode airs, take the link and send it to whatever airline that you flew and say, hey, this is my experience. Can you please give me some free airline miles? <laughs> JetBlue, I'm looking at you. This was my first time there we flying go. JetBlue, by the way. And oh. this is what? This is my experience. So wow. I'm going to put that on the <laughs> rating card. Put, put, put JetBlue on blast. <laughs> you guys yeah. let people on. Do your who customers piss in cups. always pee on the plane. <laughs> we're talking Can I with Tony. To- <laughs> we're talking with Tony Storm, and we're talking about a variety of things. A variety. And uh, <laughs> you said that resting in Japan quote made me grow up. Can you expand on that a little bit? Um. Okay. How do I put this? I. It, oh. 
it's a it's a really crazy experience living out there I was like 20 years old when I first did like my first stardom tour and I'm living in a basically you go out there and you live in what is known as the Gaijin apartment like for where they jam all the foreigners in one big room together it's tiny right it's like three bedrooms tiny and sometimes it'd be like six or seven of us it's crazy um quite the living experience um quite a fun experience did it for a while did it for a few years and i i got the best training well like as i as i was doing all this i made friends i had some really fun matches really good it was a grow like i felt like i grew as a person a lot going through that system you uh you you had an incredible run in stardom including being the world of stardom champion the first non-japanese wrestler to hold the title uh what does that mean to you um oh i mean it means a lot i uh i i didn't realize how much of my heart was like still in stardom oh i i guess i always did realize but i guess i never got over it and it was um i guess i spent so much time there more than i realized because life moved so quickly that i just have this uh i i love it out there i really do and i i love the girls and i i I look back on it and I have some really fond memories and it made me who I am. Like really, uh, yeah, it elevated me to who I am. And um, yeah, it gave me a big confidence boost, I think as well it, with, with my work. I, um, because I got to wrestle a lot. I got to wrestle long matches. I got to be in there with girls that are just out of this world good. And I guess, yeah, all those things kind of, um, yeah, it came together and really helped me grow. We're talking with Tony Storm uh, in 2017, became the first wrestler to win two tournaments in the same year, the Cinderella and the five-star GP, which brings us to this question. we got fan questions coming up next segment, but we'll hit this one right now since we're talking about this. This is from Kimmy MTZ 17 Who wants to know on Twitter, uh, Tony, knowing your previous experience in tournaments like the Mae Young Classic or the Cinderella Tournament in Stardom, the two tournaments that you won, do you think you have an advantage now over the rest of the field in the Owen Hart Foundation tournament? Yeah, I guess that makes sense. I guess you could say that I have um, a decent amount of tournament experience. and um, I would think so, yeah. Yeah, I'm hoping that that uh, really helps me in this tournament. Um, and so far, I'm feeling pretty good about it. Uh, yeah, I guess I'm a tournament guy. I don't know what it is. I just <laughs> I seem to attract tournaments. Yeah, put me in there every it. day. Right, put it's me great. in there every it's week. It's a good time, Absolutely. yeah. Let me wrestle. Send me in there. Put me to work. Make me yeah. do if things. If it ain't broke, if it ain't broke and it makes money, keep it going. Yep. Uh, uh, also, I don't know how we haven't mentioned this yet, but I want to wish you congratulations. You got married in February. You and Juice Robinson, so that's Thank awesome. Thank you, yes. Uh, how uh, how yes. How's it uh, working travel schedules out now, now that you're coming with us on the road all the time? Like, How it's, are you handling it? Um, it's been pretty crazy because he's back to work now, you know, he's, um, we're both uh, like back at it. And when we first got together, we were like, it was pandemic. So we, we had all this time together and we, uh, you know, and now it's like, bye, but it's good. We, um, you know, we, we, uh, you know, keep it together and we got a little dog that we have to be home for as much as possible. So we're just constantly oh. like trying to, but we, we like wrestle and then we like get home so, because we can for Ralph. It's really quite lame. You know what I mean? But, yeah. It's, um, it's, it's your regular yeah. life of two people traveling, right? So is there something yeah. when you're together besides hanging out with your dog you'd like to do together? Uh, we like to go to the beach. We like to just, yeah, we enjoy the outdoors. We, but most, we just love being at home to be honest. Like, it's right. it's kind of weird how much I've changed in the last few years. About two or three years ago, the thought of going home after a show was like, no, like I just lived for the road. Um, but now I'm kind of like, oh yeah, I I like being at home in Florida, and it's it's yeah, yeah it's good. I like my downtime these days. Sure, it's weird. I'm with you, <laughs> nothing weird about that at all. No, yeah, I used to be such a crazy cat. I still am, yeah. but you know. I just go home a bit more now. Right. Um, so, yeah, when we're at home, we just like chilling. We just like, we like to eat. We like to grill. You know, we're, we're right. just the typical Floridian right. really words. <laughs> <laughs> On a post cub. There we are. That's us. Joe and Joe on the beach in Florida. 
near you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what any of this means. <laughs> She's just delirious from the pee in the cup still. Yeah, I mean, I a guy peed beside me today, guys. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> been heavy after, after you been wrestled a, a banger of a match on tv just yeah. you know you never know when it's gonna happen <laughs> yeah it's such just, a trip it's like what oh what, what too a much trip. To unpack. anyway <laughs> too much to unpack. well <laughs> um <laughs> one of the things that i've been really uh grateful for in like uh meeting you and meeting all the other uh wonderful people we have backstage is learning all about all of the things that make us tick and all the individual things that uh, we are passionate about that we talk about. And um, I'm getting to you talking kind of more openly more about your mental health struggles with anxiety and depression. Um, so one, thank you for talking about all that stuff because I always appreciate it. Um, two, what inspired you to speak up about all this stuff? Um, I don't know. Uh, it just kind of it's funny feels how it good, doesn't today. it? It's good that you, yeah. It's. I just think it's good to open up about stuff and not keep it so like you know uptight and you'll go crazy and then you'll be like on a early flight peeing and cops going you know you want to you know get your you know get it out there and turn to people that you can trust and um i've all i've found about doing that is it just encourages people to do the same and uh seems to help people so yeah it it feels it feels good yeah yeah uh- uh, Tony, what do you do on a daily basis to take care of yourself to manage stress? Um, well, right now I'm, I've, I feel like uh, just this year in particular, I'm, I'm just, it's radical self care at the moment. I'm just really taking good care of myself. I'm going to the, I'm going to the gym a lot. I'm drinking my coffee. I'm eating my salads. I'm uh, getting my sleep in. I don't drink any alcohol whatsoever. Um, just to keep a clear head, clear mind. Um, Very good. Cause you know, I went through a hell of an ordeal uh, not so long ago, and it was okay. quite like the toxic, stressful situation. But I right. feel like I've really been uh, doing well coming out of that, better than I thought, really growing, really maturing, and taking really good care of myself, more than I ever have. So I think it's um, important for me to be like that so that I can deliver these matches to the best of my ability. Because to be honest, there's been times in the past where I just haven't been in a good spot mentally and i've seen it in my work i like i'm like i'm looking back at some of the stuff i've done i'm like wow that was terrible i was totally not in the right mental state i I was not in a good state of mind i wasn't taking care of myself i was really down i wasn't talking to people i wasn't asking for help um but i i I don't know something happened last year i guess where i just kind of snapped out of it and was like right i'm gonna i'm gonna take care of me and me first because i'm not good to anyone unless i i do that so I, I just, I've undergone this transformation of just like, just cle- keep a clear head and just like get your shit together, Tony. Yeah. <laughs> Tony yeah. Shivani, get your shit together. Uh, I'll do it. I'll do it. I, uh, yeah. I listen. I, uh, there's th- there's things that I do here at the house, uh, you know, for my mental health, uh, mm-hmm. and things that I do on a uh, daily basis, <clears throat> Lexapro. And uh, there's also- uh, <laughs> It does help. Hell, yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. Hell and and, uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, and, and see uh, therapy and, you know, just uh, keeping a yeah. clear head. You know, that's important, man. That, I'm keeping with you on that. Keeping calm as well with the adrenaline as well. I, I found that like uh, wrestling at a young age, like uh, kind of spiked my adrenaline a lot and right. uh, I would let it kind of escalate. And I, you know, I, I lived, a, I've been living a very fast paced lifestyle for a long time since I was sure. uh, like in England, like when I was in England, the UK, I was hustling. I wasn't stopping. Uh, it's just been like nonstop ever since. And I never took that time to sit back and take care of myself and yeah. get it together. And then I was like, well, I'm just going to do whatever it takes to be right. okay. Who cares about anything else? Who cares about what anyone thinks I got to right. do what's right for me? Yeah. And yeah, and I think it's important yeah. everyone's got to do that. And you've been living a fast-paced lifestyle since you're 13. I mean, we've kind of chronologically yeah, put a, Yeah. <laughs> and now look at you at age 20. I mean, my gosh. 7 yeah. years later. Wow. Tremendous. <laughs> we're we're talking with Tony Storm. We're having a delightful conversation about uh, a variety of things. When we come back, it's time for fan questions on unrestricted. Is 
is AEW Unrestricted. Tony and Aubrey here with the wonderful and amazing Tony Storm. We've covered mental health. We've covered pissing in cups. We've covered a lot of wonderful things. <laughs> wonderful and not wonderful things. There's just nothing really... I mean, the wonderful thing is that he didn't spill a cup of piss on you. Like, I'm I, just, I had so anxiety. Relaxed. Full on anxiety. <laughs> go, like, when the plane goes up and it's shaking, you're like, I don't know how turbulent this is about to be. And this guy's got a cup of piss. And he's mm. juggling it beside me. There's mm. so much anxiety. Too much anxiety, too early in the morning. All right. Well, less anxiety. <laughs> now we have awesome fan questions. And I'm really happy the fan questions came in before they heard about the piss in the cup story. Yeah. Uh, Thank God. <laughs> well, no, no pun intended, but we have AEW Liquid on Twitter asks, uh, I love your rock and roll attitude. Who's your rock star inspiration when you enter the ring? Nikki Six. As you can tell, I've got his little line tribute mm -hmm. on my... Yes. Um, yeah, huge Motley Crue fan, so... Nikki Six. Rock and roll girl we got here with us. Uh, At Lamora wants to know, Ruby Soho once mentioned having to make a big adjustment to her cardio once she made the jump to AEW because of the longer matches. Did you have to sort of adjust your approach to wrestling since you've been a part of our company? Um, to be honest, since uh pandemic, I find it's been like wrestling so sparingly is really difficult no matter how much cardio i seem to do it i it is harder definitely i don't i don't know what it is whereas if i'm wrestling consistently uh i don't seem to notice i feel um i feel fine but uh yeah when it's like i wrestle one week and then it's uh, like maybe two weeks and then it's like 10 minutes here and two minutes here it's like oh god it is yeah it's pretty it's pretty difficult but with my radical self-care, uh, I have been getting through it, no problem. I've been eating my fruits and vegetables, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. There we go. There we go. Beacon of health, Tony Storm. <laughs> caffeine. Not really. I, I don't know how <laughs> I mean, I don't know how people don't do life without caffeine, so I fully support it. Uh, we have a question from AEW Showcase on Twitter. I'd like to know if Tony has a favorite memory during her time in stardom over in Japan. Oh god so many memories oh um i had a lot of i have a lot of the memories of um uh doing well vague memories of doing karaoke with a lot of the with a lot of the girls out there in stardom that was vague. <laughs> really good memories um you know what was really nice times for me out there was after every stardom show they like get everyone in the ring and we all do a big bow to the crowd and there's like um we all do like a this is stardom pose and i always loved doing that after the show because we would just all be um like you know and a bunch of us would be kind of silly and it was you know it, it was nice it was good times and everyone really like bonded and connected and it was um yeah i loved doing that and, like in places like park and hall and, yeah I just, I loved wrestling and parking. I loved I, I, the whole experience. It's really hard to narrow it down to just one um, thing. I have so many precious memories of so many nice people out there. It's good, yeah. <laughs> from, from at Tony Shivani 24, uh, what, oh. what's your go to karaoke song? Oh. Um, oh God. I mean, I don't do karaoke anymore, mm. guys. Just like, okay, but during those days, mm. um, <laughs> you know, what was so funny. Like one time it was so, <laughs> it was quite late in the night. I didn't, I wasn't intending on doing karaoke this night at all, but I ended up doing a lot of karaoke. You know where it just, it's kind of Moorish. You kind of get into it and they're like, you don't want to stop. And then yeah. like, everyone's like, go, oh, you should do it. And then, you, and then yeah. they're like, half an hour later they have to wrestle the microphone off you and like they're all covering their ears and somehow i was singing minoru suzuki's entrance song it's in japanese and i don't speak <laughs> japanese but i was singing it and i was good well i <laughs> i think i was and then i yeah a bunch of those little bastards had their hands over their ears is that about bullshit a great singer at minoru suzuki's entrance song that's tremendous. Oh, oh boy. Uh, uh, I I was reading through the questions earlier, and I'm going to skip ahead, so I have the chance to ask this question because okay. I find it fascinating. Uh, Ryan Kratz on Twitter asks, I've heard that your mom was so supportive that she sh that she sold hot dogs at the concession stand so you could rustle. Is this true? Yes. Uh, so uh, 
when I was when I first started, I wrestled for this company in Australia called IPW Australia, and we would have these weekly shows. Uh, every Saturday night, we would have a show in the, these little industrial sheds, uh, like an industrial shed. Like you know, no one would go to them. Like it would usually be mums and dads, but we were there every weekend putting on a show like it was like our life depended on it. And uh, my mom would go to them and like you know, just I was really young. I shouldn't have been like you know wrestling with a bunch of boys but you know it was a way for her to kind of I guess be there and support me and you know she got into it and everyone knew my mom and like she's made a lot of my sets of gear and she's been really supportive through this entire journey so yeah that's that's true yeah I'm gonna have to find a photo or something there's mom selling hot dogs oh yeah she's all yeah so oh. good at Thomas McCauley asked being from the Gold Coast did you ever watch Sea Patrol no, I guess not. I've never heard of it. Didn't okay. really watch too much TV growing up. Yeah. I... Just watched wrestling. Just, you know. Very clearly. <laughs> running around, just wrestling, being silly. Uh, yeah. We have a question Sorry. from... There's that no, conversation no. over, isn't it? That's it. Yeah. <laughs> question right. answered. Move well, on. That's right. Guess not, nope. bitch. Ain't We're going. It. Sorry. <laughs> well, the next step is for you to obviously go and watch it, but whatever. Uh, a question from lovely Lance Loom Loomly. <laughs> Huge Tony fan, especially since she's into the 80s rock and roll. What's her favorite Motley Crue album and song? Oh, God. Why well, is always favorites, 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 favorites. Don't drive me nuts. Um, uh, my favorite song is Same Old Situation. But you know what? It changes every day. Some days it's Home Sweet Home. Some days it's Wild Side. And uh, yeah, no particular album that I favor. I just, yeah. I like all their old stuff. I didn't quite like the 90s stuff, you know, like that when they didn't have Vince Neil. That's all I'll say. I'm not going to talk too much about this. I'll sound like a nerd. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, do you want to talk about Molly Crew more than you talked about Piss? Because then otherwise you're a person who's really into Piss, and that's weird. Wow. <laughs> What if I am? <laughs> I mean, me. everybody's into something. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm not here to judge. This will be the latest headline. I'm just saying, this Jeremy is the record. Reveals that she's yeah. into piss. piss. See, wow. now they're just going to like copy and paste a transcript on like a fucking ringsidenews.com. And like, yeah. now it's going to sound like I'm actually into it. And then every, like, all these idiots will read it and just straight up believe it. My mom will be messaging me next. Yeah. God. Well, no. just uh, just let you guys know at uh, third segment, uh, five minutes to go. This officially went off the rails. If it hadn't before, <laughs> it hadn't before. What? What are you talking okay. about? <laughs> okay, we're going to go back to Chris Broadbeck, who wants to know: aside from the Japanese lettering and the umlauts on your gear and name, what cultural influences from your time in Europe and Asia have found their way into your daily life? Oh, Tony like Storm. Like, uh, like what stuff from, did I take with me now from like yes. living in Japan? Yeah. Um, my obsession with noodles, probably. Okay. Um, my, my obsession really with good food. My, my, I like crushed. It's funny you ask this because I got off that plane today that after that whole ordeal yeah. and just crushed sushi rolls. Cause I don't really eat much on show days mm -hmm. and like, that was my refeed. Like my love for Asian food is just ridiculous it's yeah i'm with you it's embarrassing it's yes. like so <laughs> i'm obsessed yeah. um what else do I, I don't know um would love it if i had one of their toilets in my house that might be my next Ooh. investment you know okay. you know the japanese toilets why is everything mm -hmm. i've been talking about today bloody toilet related <laughs> you know what's wrong with me it's we are so just embarrassing we are just the conduit we are just the conduits for what you want to talk about okay can't That's do just us. <laughs> oh my god oh wow uh i'll i'll, I'll share a i'll share a quick story because i totally agree with the tony storm loves food thing so the first time i met tony was a couple years ago we were doing may young classic we actually didn't get a chance to work together but after the show we hung out together and wherever our hotel was it was like right across the street from an ihop and I swear, I have never seen girls put down that many pancakes before in my life. But like, oh, so I think you everybody. Know, so you know what I'm talking about then? Oh, yeah. No, it's like, what? Well, so open when the I IHOP I menu. sushi today. <laughs> you, no, you crushed like four dozen rolls. Like, I, that's the picture I had in my head because we went to the IHOP. You're like, you know what? 
birthday cake cupcake pancakes sound good <laughs> and then a stack of like six of them with like party cake sprinkles and frosting come out and i think you also ordered an omelet and also ate that <laughs> i do that i do that me yeah, but you also so like you had yeah. so many bruises all over your face because you had wrestled four <laughs> times a day so the waiter was just looking at us like my face what is wrong with her bleeding. My face no, it wouldn't was. stop bleeding. I was worried it was going to like fall into the pancake topping. So bad. You I do it like anyway. after show. <laughs> I don't care. Like from the Simpson with the donut machine episode. Uh, that's how I am. So, you know, so you've seen how I am with food. I, yeah, it. I don't know. Like on, on show days, I like, I don't want to eat. Oh, I'm too stressed. I'm like freaking out about the match all day. And then when, um, after, oh my God. Like, I, I don't know what comes over me. There was one time, oh, if you, sh- you should see me with wings sometime. If you yeah. really want to see me, put on a show. Give me some chicken wings. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll mess I want to see some that. Chicken wings. I want to see yeah. that. I, I kind of want to see that. Yeah. If I'm at the right level of hunger, I'll, like, demolish stuff. Like, I could eat, like, a whole cake. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> I love Zero that term. Effort. I love the term. <laughs> If I'm at the right level of hunger, <laughs> gotta be at the right mindset. Well, that means, as I was saying it, I was like, I don't know where I'm going with this, but hopefully someone will know what I mean. Oh, God. oh, oh! I feel you. We just became best friends on this podcast. You don't know it, but oh yeah, Great we stuff. should go and eat sometime. You. We should just like go. Oh, because like yeah, we should just go like hit up a buffet. Mm. Oh yeah, no. I mean, we're going to Vegas soon, so yeah, no, that's gonna <gasps> oh, happen. Oh my God! Right you know for a whole like, week. Right? Or all week, which... Have you seen those places that have like the giant lobster and stuff? I want to yes. find something like yeah. that and just like yeah. we're, oh, that's we're gonna have thing. to roll roll Tony Storm out of the buffet every day in yeah. Vegas, just like like if you let me loose, we end up at today? Yeah. <laughs> if you let me loose around some peel and eat shrimp, like I might never stop, <laughs> <laughs> like never stop. <laughs> all right, uh, I want to hit one more question here. Uh, let's go for. And I, I hope this doesn't bring back bad memories because we, we went on a positive note. But uh, at Kane wants to know was the was the pie in the face thing at WWE the final straw for you, and who and who green um, green lit that segment? Okay, I mean it's okay. food, so to assume it was All okay right. at first. Well, if you must know, I was actually quite happy with that segment that day because um, it was a lot better There's than the food. original idea. The original idea was like. Um, I was called up and asked if I was comfortable with uh, having my shirt ripped off or something like, yeah, yeah. they wa- they wanted to do this whole angle where it was like, they were going to rip my shirt. and so be all like embarrassed in my underwear, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. And then when you're asked if you're comfortable, if you're to do that and it's like, literally people are being fired every single week. It's like, well, yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> Yeah. Sure, I'm comfortable. Yeah, I guess I'm I comfortable. I can become comfortable very that. quickly. I, I, think, I think I guess I'm gonna be doing that. Um, but then a lot of people fought to like not have right. that happen because that would have been terrible, uh, yeah. a yeah. terrible idea. So to be yeah. honest, the pie was actually like a really it was quite a sweet treat in comparison to what it could have been. So right. in hindsight, I don't really mind. It was uh, yeah. quite fun. You know what? I'm not even mad. People think I'm so mad about that. I think it's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> well, as you said, it, uh, covered in pie. <laughs> as you said, it was quite sweet, and if you're at the right level of hunger, oh, you know what I mean. We're just talking about how much I could just demolish food, and then they go throwing food at me. So that uh, was okay. That was a good day, not painful uh, memory at all. That was a good yeah. Day. No, this is the perfect punctuation of your time there. <laughs> it's like that, was one, end that, with food. that was one of my better times. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Tony, you are so much fun. Thanks for your time today. Oh, my God. Thank you, guys. (laughs) And now with all the important information about AEW, here's referee extraordinaire Aubrey Edwards. AEW Dynamite is on TBS Wednesday nights, 8 o'clock, 7 central. AEW Rampage is on TNT Friday nights at 10 p.m., 9 central. TNT, Uh TBS. We're on all the networks. And they're on YouTube Mondays with AEW Dark Elevation on Tuesdays with AW Dark. Both are at 7 o'clock, 6 central. This podcast comes out Thursday mornings on all of your favorite podcast platforms. You can just search for us, AEW Unrestricted. And then Monday morning, afternoon-ish, depending on your various time zones, you can watch mm-hmm. uh, all of our pretty faces talk about dudes being on cups and airplanes. That's right. And Tony Storm <laughs> can follow her on uh, Instagram 
at Tony Storm underscore. That's T O N I S T O R M underscore. I am Aubrey great. Edwards. My this name is Tony, Tony Shivani. Yes. And this has been great. Tony Storm, all of us, thank you for listening to AEW Unrestricted.